Ark Survival Evolved, a survival game released in early access all the way back in 2015 that took the gaming industry by storm. Strategically coincided with the launch of the second trilogy of the Jurassic Park IP titled Jurassic World, it capitalized on the rising dinosaur fever at the time by bringing these fantastical creatures, as well as other prehistoric animals, into a mysterious world where players could fight, tame and breed these beasts at their heart's content. Possessing extremely impressive graphics for its time, unique setting and a solid mix of both PvP and PvE content, ARK became an absolute powerhouse in this genre, selling over 35 million copies since its debut 8 years ago and turning this small indie title into a fully fledged franchise with multiple games already released, as well as a full-on sequel, an animated series, and potentially even a live-action movie, all coming in the foreseeable future. The game's success is unquestionable. With a staggering 83% positive review score and at minimum 30,000 daily users, ARK established itself as one of the top survival games of all time. However, not everything went smoothly to its development team, Studio Wildcard. Despite all their achievements acquired until now, the game, its developers and even its publisher Snail Games slowly but steadily went through some peculiar and even serious controversies during the almost decade arc has been available. Events which permanently stained their reputation. Things like Wildcard being sued by Trendy for breaking the non-compete clause to its co-founder Jeremy Stiglitz working on ARK during a period of time which he wasn't allowed to work for any other game dev company. Selling DLC the same price as the game itself while ARK was still in early access increasing ARK's base price from $30 to $60 during the official 1.0 launch, excluding DLC by the way, suddenly separating the game season pass into two, forcing players to pay twice to have all the DLCs. Devs suspected of perpetuating a black market where players exchange game assets and illegal services such as hiring hackers to kill enemy tribes for real money. Wildcard selling another early access title which turned out to be a literal ARK reskin with the discovery of a hidden ARK menu inside the game. Snail Games accused of admin abuse and corruption for wrongly banning more than 90 players over an in-game tribe raid and many, many other incidents, some of which happened very recently. You see, even though ARK has pretty much always been highly successful, an unfortunate turn of events would change Wildcard's history forever. A few months after its early access launch, this dev company merged with a rather obscure publisher, Snail Games. The vast majority of the community is very much aware of its existence and no one has a positive thing to say about it. And that is all due to one single man, Wang Shihai. Snail Game CEO. This specific individual is the main antagonist of this story and the perpetrator of numerous acts that not only hurt the reputation of everyone involved with this company, but also heavily damaged ARK on multiple fronts. From threatening wildcard CEOs, pushing NFTs into ARK, allowing, supporting and defending Snail Game's employees that cheat on its own game, lying to investors to owing over $1 million to the popular server provider Nitrado, Shihai has been accused for years of being responsible for the majority of issues ARK has faced throughout its lifespan, but most importantly, its most recent one. On January 23rd, 2023, Jeremy announced on Twitter that a remaster for ARK Survival Evolved was in the works and was going to be completely free. And just two months later, on March 31st, during a weekly community post, it was officially announced as ARK Survival Ascended, a next-generation remaster of the base game 
harnessing the power and graphical fidelity of Unreal Engine 5, while also introducing a multitude of new features and quality of life changes such as cross-platform, console modding support, and many others. For $50 That's right folks, the previous free ARC update was going to actually cost almost as much as the original. But don't worry, it gets worse. Going down the community post, it is said that this new title is exclusive to ARC Respawn Bundle, which contains the already mentioned remaster as well as its sequel, ARC 2. A game that was delayed on that same post to the end of 2024. Meaning that not only already existing players won't get ARC Ascended for free, not only everyone will be forced to pay a bundle just for ASA, but also half the bundle won't be available for, at the very least, the next two years. Oh, but wait, it gets worse. As if this wasn't enough already, remember all the DLCs and season passes people already purchased throughout the past eight years? That's right, players will need to pay for all of them again. On separate bundles. Again. Needless to say that people weren't all that happy about it. Reddit was in flames, its Steam page review bomb, the official Discord in disarray. The community was furious. Wildcard needed to act in order to appease their fanbase and act quickly. And so they did. Only one week later, another community post was published announcing some significant changes to their upcoming installment. Could this be? Was this the time the developers were going to listen to the community? Was this the beginning of Wildcard's redemption? They increased the price to $60. Now, in all fairness, some alterations were indeed good. The bundle was scrapped, Ark Ascended was now a standalone purchase, and all the DLCs will be free. Not the free update that was initially advertised, and $60 is still pretty expensive for a lot of people, but credit where credit is due, this change was an overall net positive. Unfortunately, it wouldn't be long until this franchise would sink itself into more controversy. Remember the $1 million owed to Nitrato? It is rather strange that they are in debt despite ARK earning $1.3 billion since 2015, isn't it? And that begs the question, where did the money go? And it all comes back to Snail Game CEO. Thanks to Nublet's great investigation, we know that Shihai is also founder of another company, Indie EV, a car manufacturer that focuses on assembling futuristic electric vehicles with an inbuilt supercomputer, <laughs> capable of supporting high end gaming, live streaming, crypto, and blockchain. With its founding being two years after ARK's launch and the game being the literal only source of revenue for Snail Games, despite Indie EV's head of operations refusing to say where the funding came from, it is very easy to speculate what it was. But that's not the end of it. As recent as October this year, that same company filed for bankruptcy without producing a single vehicle proving to be a complete failure from top to bottom and a massive expense with absolute zero profit. And to the surprise of no one, just a few days earlier, during a Q&A, Wildcard confirms that the reason behind ARK's ascended existence is lack of money for the sequel. Now, video games are highly expensive to make, that is true. However, just as I previously mentioned, ARK made a lot of money like a lot of money. Even if Wildcard was absolutely god-awful at managing their finances, to this day they had never have to cut budget for any of their projects. In fact, they even went the extra mile and financially supporting mothers through their ARC sponsored mod program, which is still currently active by the way. So to say that they now lack money while still spending dozens of thousands of dollars on their sponsored program, while at the same time a car company owned by the same person that owns Wildcard's publisher files for bankruptcy, which probably cost hundreds of millions of dollars during the entire process, 
sounds extremely fishy to me. But nevertheless, that debt to Nitrato is indeed real. So much so that weeks ago Snail Games and the latter signed an SEC filing, Securities and Exchange Commission, providing 20% of Ark Survival Ascended's revenue to Marvius, Nitrato's parent company, as well as full and exclusive server rights for the game meaning that Nitrato is the only company allowed to host third-party servers for ARK, making it a complete monopoly. And the consequences of such would appear quicker than most of us would expect, with Nitrato secretly hiding the fact that players can even locally host servers with their own machines, only publicly sharing that information a day after ARK's Ascendant's launch. But what about the game itself? After all this turmoil, how is the remaster like exactly? The easiest and most evident change is its graphical fidelity. By switching to the newest generation of Unreal Engine, the game has now at its disposal cutting-edge technology which allows it to display its scenery with incredible detail, turning Ark into a marvelous piece of art. In addition to its graphical boost, ASA also got a plethora of improvements and quality of life changes long requested by the player base, from a more intuitive UI, dino tracking, better pathfinding to an improved building system, this feels like a true remaster. Right? Going to its Steam page, we can observe that the game is being advertised as a reimagined from the ground up version of Ark Survival Evolved, a complete revamp of the original. But if we really pay attention and analyze the game closely, we will conclude that that statement is a full-blown lie. Reimagine implies that this is a recreation of Ark, an improved, a superior version of the game. And while we did get that when it comes to its graphics and the map that we play on, Ark itself remains exactly the same, and not in a good way. Ascended has multiple improvements and additions that is true, way more than the ones I previously mentioned even, but none of them are game changers. All we really got were mere small quality of life changes, most of which we already had in the base game through modding for free. While those additions are very much welcome, that was not what the game needed, and not what the developers should have prioritized. Hark has been plagued by numerous and very serious issues throughout all these years, and absolutely none of them got touched in Survival Ascended. The awful gunplay, the abysmally inconsistent hit detection, the terrible dinosaur movement, the bare bones flying mechanic, the horribly unbalanced dinosaur roster, the extremely poorly designed character progression, the game's performance, meshing, the endless amount of cheaters that existed on official servers, the lack of PvE content, none of this, absolutely none of it, changed in the game's remaster. This was the opportunity Wildcard had to fix the major issues this title had and truly ascend it to the next level, to make a true improved arc but all they did was just put a new coat of paint. The game may look pretty now, it may have some new little bells and whistles, it may feel amazing and fresh during the first 5, 10, 15, 20 hours. But in the end, everyone will recognize that Ark Survival Ascended is the same Ark that we have for 8 years. The same game, with the same problems, the same bugs, the same design flaws. We are paying $60 for a shinier version of the game with a total server monopoly which forces us to use a worse service than before. ASA is not what you think it is. It is much, much worse. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for supporting the channel and the content I create. If you want to join the ranks you can do so for only $1 a month, the link will be in the description. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and opinions down below, join our Discord server for memes and intelligent stuff, and I hope to see you all next week.